first of all, welcome. Uh, grateful you've taken some time out of your uh, your evening um, to join us. Uh, I want to introduce Nicole Miller, who's our development coordinator. Nicole, you say hi, so you pop onto everyone's screen. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. There you go. So Nicole is the person. Any questions? Um, yeah, you have about the campaign, or you want to connect about your own donations, or that kind of stuff. She's that's her role. Um, so and her email address is very simple. It's the same as all the other email addresses at Surrey Christian School. First initial, last name at SurreyChristian.com. So N Miller at SurreyChristian.com. Uh, in worst case scenario, you can always just contact the admin house to get a hold of her, or send an email to the info at SurreyChristian.com and. We'll patch it through, so that's also an option. All right, well, let me uh, share my screen with you. Uh, I have, a, I have I think, a fairly brief PowerPoint presentation, only about 80 slides, I'm just joking. A uh, fairly brief PowerPoint presentation um, to give you a sense of, yeah, where we're going and what's, what's happening um, with this whole building project. So at this point now, you guys should see uh, the screen, it says Places, and Spaces, Capital Campaign Launch. So, Nicole, give me a thumbs up. That looks good. All right, we're good to go. So, here we go. So, learning targets. Your children uh, are involved in learning targets. Um, we're transitioning our board to doing learning targets. So, what are the learning targets uh, for tonight? So, these are the I can statements that hopefully by the end of tonight, you're, you can say these with confidence. So learning targets are, I can understand the overall plans for the building project and the recent developments regarding rezoning and building permits. So that's just sort of that recent, all the recent stuff on that. Uh, second one is, I can envision my children, my grandchildren, and the children in my community in this space. So hopefully as you see the plans, you get excited about what that could look like for your children and your grandchildren. We mean that by including grandchildren who are on, or, or grandparents who are on the screen but also those of you who aren't, who will have grandchildren at some point, that you are thinking of, I'm involved in something that's a legacy for multiple generations. I can learn how much money we have raised so far and how much we still need to raise. So I have exciting news around that. And I can get excited about seeing myself being a part of making this project successful. In whatever way that is, we hope that you can be excited about that and you want to help make this project happen for Surrey Christian School. So this is the overall site plan. This should be fairly familiar to you. Um, nothing new on this, just, just a reminder. For those of you who are new to Surrey Christian School, this is new to you. For those of you who are not, you should have seen this in past by videos or emails or other presentations like this, uh, at town hall meetings or uh, annual general meetings. So if you, just to give you a sense of where our bearings are, if you can see my cursor moving, that is the current uh, older building. That's the intermediate building or old middle school. And if we go very top right corner of your screen, that gray section there, that is the current primary building. And our hope uh, is to do this infill project here, join these together and to finish this campus. This new parking lot area where the cursor is, that is currently the admin house. And you can see the gravel parking lot that we park cars in right now beside the admin house. And then off to the left here, or off to the far left corner, you can see the yellow house that we own as well. So that's sort of the site plan just basically there to give you a sense of that. I hope that's nothing new for you, for most of you, and pretty straightforward. We'll go through more detail and a much uh, better graphics further on, but that's just the general review or introduction. I wanna give you an update. You don't have to be able to read all these uh, little words. Don't worry about that. But I wanna explain a little bit why we've been delayed and what's been happening over the last seven months. We haven't been delayed because of COVID. We've been delayed because, and let me give you bearings again, where my cursor is here, where you see an 8888, that is the inter current intermediate building. And then down to the right of it, that's the current primary building. Up above that, you see some yellow lines. And above that, the new parking lot. That's the current admin house right there. We've been in discussions because there's a big ditch that runs along between the current parking lot and the admin house. And lots of conversations with both provincial government and the city of Surrey re regarding is that ditch a fish bearing stream? Uh, is it a nutrient bearing stream which gathers water? Uh, and what the challenge is, if you look at that little ditch, then you have nothing 
And then down, almost right in the middle of your screen, you've got this blue line. That's the pond. Um, and discussions about, is that bear fish? It definitely has tadpoles. But the point that we're learning is whether these areas are fish bearing, they may be nutrient bearing along the pipe into this because these red lines at the far right of your screen, there's two of them are fish bearing streams. And so what the city and the province want to know is, are we collecting water that gathers nutrients that feeds those fish? So we've gone back and forth to the city with multiple assessments on is that water, is there anything in there, in there after a rainstorm at all? Um, and, uh, and then we have a green line going up here. You can see that green line that's at, kind of right along the edge of the new parking lot. I don't know if you can see that light green line where my cursor is. When we built the soccer field, we pushed the soil up onto a slope, which makes great topogony hill. Like your kid loves sledding on that hill. Uh, and there's a little bit of a berm, about two foot berm over the backyard. The problem with that is that water, water collected on there. And so the city wasn't sure if that was also gathering nutrients. So that's been about a five to seven month process of back and forth of having your own assessments done by the people at the bottom right of your screen called Phoenix Environmental, who the city knows well, uh, and city assessors as well to say, these are not indeed fish bearing streams and they may not be nutrient bearing streams. We've, we are quite conf confident we've settled at a compromise where the green line will be pretty much ignored as it's pretty much just a backyard. And, but we've had to change the setback for what is the ditch or swale uh, because of its new classification. And that's taken us time because then we've had to redraw our, our two parking lots a bit. So the new parking lot has had to go a little further north and the other parking lot's got to go a little further south. All of that takes time because you have to resubmit to the city. They go through all the process. If they don't approve it, they send it back to you and you tweak it. Um, and that has taken a bit of time and a little bit of money, not much. Uh, the one trip over is that in moving the parking lot further north, we run into something right here on the road, which you can drive by and take a look at, called a power pole. That actually doesn't fit well in the middle of the driveway, so we will have to also move a power pole, which is also paperwork in a process. So that's what's been happening kind of during COVID, sort of April, May, June, through the summer into now. And we are expecting um, our final submission went in September 28th. And the city has given us notice that they are now reading September submissions. So we were hoping the next two or three weeks to get a, to find approval for that. And then we'd like to have our first reading um, at the city of Surrey before Christmas. Uh, and that totally puts us on track uh, to get us ready for like a summer kickoff. Okay, so that's the, that's the what's, what's been going on and why it's been quiet. That gives you an update on that. Don't worry about reading all that content. It is a little bit fascinating how many waterways and the different regulations around that. I just, I want to say the city of Surrey has expressed, um, yeah, just sort of gratitude or has just made positive comments that Surrey Christian School has done a very good job of respecting and, and staying with the setbacks that were put in place 25 years ago. If you look at our property line, the very south end of our property down here, you know that fence along the primary playground is all jaggedy? That's not our property line. Our property line is the white line. That fence line is the setback because of that stream that's in the red line. And we've honored that. We don't have playground space going on and around the stream. We haven't let kids in there. So that bodes well for us in a, being a people who, uh, who respect it and will do a good job of taking care of our land. Um, and knowing that, you know, this may feel frustrating, but knowing that um, the stewardship of the environment is also a value of Surrey Christian School and the, and the development of Surrey in the next 30 years is expected to be quite massive. And so they are trying to be stewardly over parkland and streams and waterways because they won't get those back once their subdivisions put in. So we want to respect that as we go through this process uh, and hope they respect our ability to care well and be good stewards. So that gives you a bit of a sense of, of what's taken so long and where we're at in that journey of timing. So we're not on a spring break build out anymore. We're now on a summer uh, breaking ground plan or June actually is what our hope is. We hope to bulldoze stuff in June uh, and get going. So this is nice new 3D uh, picture that gives you a bit of a sense of the plan. So on the far right of your screen is the old uh, intermediate building. The far left is our current shiny new primary building. And this section right in the middle uh, is the new, will be the new grand entrance. 
We've got a nice plaza down here. This sort of drops down to a nice big plaza. Students won't be standing in bark modes waiting for their cars. Um, and this oh, nice double uh, glass that opens onto a big multi-purpose space. And of course, this is the reception. So the entrance up by 162nd will no longer be the main entrance to the school. That gives you a bit of a sense. Remembering our goals for this, that we want to get done is we want to increase and improve parking flow. So increase by a, a number of stalls, but almost more important, increase, improve the flow. So one way in, one way out, I'll show you that. We want to increase a little bit of classroom space because we're kind of cramped. Uh, we want to increase learning space. We have no place for our kids to do projects together except the underground parking. So that idea of a multi-purpose space. Uh, and PE space, same with multi-purpose space. We want to add a staff room. Currently, we have a renovated uh, hallway for that. Uh, we want to create offices for the admin house. This admin house has been a temporary facility for almost eight years now. Uh, and the city has been very gracious about that, but we need to move it. We're not meant to be here long term. And we want to finish this property off and be ready to go uh, and also increase playground space. So those are the goals of that, of the project. This gives you an overall view. It gives you a bit of a better sense, a little more three-dimensional. Again, if you look at my cursor, you can see this is the current intermediate wing, grade four to seven. Down here is the top right corner of your screen is the current primary building. And right in the middle is your is the infill site. You can see the traffic flow will be an entrance up here, this nice yellow car. Uh, it'll be one way through all the way around and then out up the other way. So one way in, one way out. The city loves that for us. Um, because of some of our big trees, we're forced to have some setback here, which actually makes it a beautiful site instead of just a huge parking lot. Buses will be doing drop off in here. We'll actually fit more about three or four buses in a row. There'll be drop off for cars in here and drop off for cars along here. Knowing that uh, students will always be able to drop off to the right of their vehicle and not cross traffic. With the exception of buses, which will go over a raised curb, which will be monitored by a crossing guard a staff member. Um, the idea is just being much safer for, for children. Anyways, that gives you an overall view. This is where the old yellow house will be. This will be an all-weather gravel field, just spreading in with grass around as well. And just spreading out more space for kids to play uh, and more opportunities. So right now they're quite packed in on the field. So that's the overall site plan. I hope that makes sense to you. This is a cutaway view of the bottom floor. So you can look at that plaza outside where my cursor is. Uh, and then right here, it's got furniture in it right now. That's just, I think, um, architects don't draw empty spaces. But that space is meant to be multi-purpose. So it can be used for primary kids to play uh, in the gym. It can be used to do a big research science fair project. All the grade threes together doing a massive project. Small chapels and assemblies, just all that kind of stuff. With some kind of partitions here so it can close off. This would be the new Learning Commons library space on this floor and the floor above it. Uh, this is the big grand entrance. Uh, this is reception. These are admin offices. And then back along here is staff room space. Uh, right at the very back of the hallway up here uh, with bathrooms uh, and some workspaces. So that's the main floor. Pretty straightforward on that. So 95% of parents would come in this way dropping your kids off. Hope that makes sense to give you, I mean, yeah, hope you get a sense of your bearings. You've got the primary building in the bottom left corner of your screen and the intermediate building up in the top right corner of your screen. So that's a cutaway of the bottom floor. If you look at a cutaway of the top floor, you can see that this is all open to below. Uh, and then you see the top floor has two classrooms on the back. And we have three breakout rooms, another need in our school. So two small ones, one large one. So groups of four or a group of eight. Just do small group work or extra learning assistance. Uh, this is the upper floor of the learning commons. It's open to learning commons below. So trying to build design for a community instead of partitioning everyone off to have some openness to that. Uh, and then bathrooms, student bathrooms uh, tucked in over here as well. So this is kind of a cool space here where the cursor is, right above the entranceway. Instead of having um, an entranceway that went like 30 feet up, uh, we carved out about seven feet here. So we still have a, a you know, 15 or 12 foot or whatever. It's quite a large entranceway ceiling space. You have a reading nook with stairs that go up it and a little slide that goes out of it. And the idea is for elementary and primary kids you know, in Learning Commons to have a space where there's big, you know, those big beanbag pillows and just, yeah, a little, win a little window to look out over the entranceway. It just kind of creates some child-friendly spaces so it doesn't feel uh, too much um, like it's not a school. In fact, if, we, if you look down here, 
And in fact, if we go back a couple of slides, I can tell you a really cool feature I want to show you. If you look right here beside this person, you notice there's two big tall doors. There's actually going to be a primary student only door there that's half the height. And the idea is that it's really simple, it's, not, it's super cost effective um, thing to do. And it actually just sends a message this isn't just a random institutional building, but it's actually a school building for children. And then what we want them to feel like it's their space. So simple things like that, there's spaces that are created for kids, uh, very clearly. So that's an example of that. So I hope that that uh, gives you a good sense of what the drawings are and, uh, and what it looks like. Okay, we're gonna do a 3D tour now, and I'm gonna narrate that tour. It's gonna show you everything you've seen in slides, but as a walkthrough, which could be a, a bit of a better sense uh, of what that looks like. So I'm just gonna load that up, and uh, we'll, yeah, you'll, you'll start on the road, and we'll wander down into the parking lot. Um, you'll cut off a few cars in the way, but that's just uh, apologies for that right away. Uh, and then we'll just, yeah, we'll get a sense of what the design looks like as though you were a person walking into it and, uh, and uh, dropping off uh, your son or daughter or your grandkids at school uh, on the first day when it's open. Um, and again, it will have furniture placed. The furniture placement is for the sake of the drawing, not necessarily how uh, our final plans will be. So let's see if, yeah, here we go. So we should be on our way now. Join me on a tour. So here we go. We're gonna turn left into the entranceway. Uh, we're going to cut this pink car off, just going to turn it right in front of that person. So, yep, we'll just ignore that. Uh, head down, you can see the bus drop off there. And then students can get dropped off by their parents where that white car is. Uh, and get unloaded safely. And cars, with passing cars, continue right through. But we're not. We're now magically out of our car. And we can now see the front of the school. You can see that plaza, a little child holding a balloon, which I've never seen at our school yet. Uh, but a good sense of the big entrance of the school, really simple but nice and open, lots of space for students to gather. That's the goal, is there's lots of space for students to be out there talking and families to sit, lots of place to sit. Now we're gonna walk in to the front entrance. So here we go, little child door there. The doors will open, that might have hurt a bit as you walk through that one, but they will open, don't worry. So here we come, your reception is right, that's reception, it probably won't look exactly like that, it might have a countertop that. Two things, but that's the reception. We pan to the right and we go into the learning common space with the big sort of stairwell that's open to the top. Uh, and then you can see all the way to that multi purpose space, which is super bright and light uh, with lots of space for multiple activities and partitions to block that off. And then around the corner, we can see out another exit out to the back playground space. So we're going to journey out there, the black playground, the back playground space. We'll have some nice flat blacktop. We're going to get rid of some of the weird levels that are there uh, and create nice flat blacktop space for kids to play because that'll be our largest spot. And then you can see as we're fading away from the school, the classrooms on the top, staff room on the bottom, and the primary to your right. Uh, and then now we have a bit of an aerial view. Um, you can get a sense of what the school looks like. You can see the, the soccer field, uh, the parking lot, and the additional playground space beyond that. I hope that gives you a good sense of uh, what it looks like. hope that was helpful. All right. I'm going to go back in here. So now, uh, next step I'm super excited to talk to you about is how much, so that's the building project. That gives you an updated sense of what it looks like. I hope that gets you excited about it. I hope you can envision your child being in that space and they look at all the natural light, which we know is better for kids. Look at the space, you know, we think of COVID times, having space is probably a good thing for us. Uh, it's just, yeah, and lots of air moving. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited about that space and uh, having it done right and finishing off the, the, the project. But we've been, but while that's been going on, we've been working behind the scenes uh, to, to, to try to build up sort of a launch donation amount. So we've been meeting with some of our major donors to say, will you commit to this project with us? Will you invest money in us? Will you commit to a donation or a pledge over three years? And we've been gathering that to come out to you now to say, look, we've raised this much in silent phase, and now we're publicly launching with this amount and inviting you to now take your part into that. So our goal in this project uh, is to raise $3 million of an of a, of a over $6 million project. 
Uh, and I'm excited to let you know that we have already have $850,000 that has been pledged or donated to us uh, for this project. So that gives you a sense of the percentage that's already raised so far. I hope that's exciting for you. That's a lot of money. Um, and so those are people, a lot of those people are former parents. Uh, most of those are former parents or grandparents or and or grandparents in school who are excited about this place. And so we're, we're there with that amount of money. And now we're going, now we're coming to you to say, this is what we have left to raise. So we are 22% raised already and we're going to go after the rest of it. So what does that mean? Well, if we're going to reach $3 million, actually, um, it means we need $2.15 million more, which seems a lot, but there's 719 families in our school. That equals $2,990 per family. So if every family was able to do $2,990 over three years, 83 bucks a month for 36 months, we'd reach our goal of $3 million. If we wanted to build this debt-free, a roundabout debt-free, that's 5,000, 5 million, uh, 5.15 million needed. So of our 719 families, that's $7,162 uh, per family, which is basically 200 bucks a month for 36 months. And we're pretty much debt-free. Um, and by debt, and what, what that means is when we're debt-free, that means our operating costs uh, and our budget isn't servicing as much debt, which frees up more money for programs. So we win in the end. It allows us to keep tuition as low as possible and function well as a school. But I know some of you are sitting in and you're thinking, I don't think I can do that right now because of where our family's at or where COVID's at. Uh, and some of you are thinking, I can do that. And some of you are thinking, I can probably do more, more than that, actually. And we recognize that uh, is what, what, what a community looks like. So I want to share with you our giving chart. Some of you have seen this before. That allows you to find your place on here. So we've just sort of randomly spread out gifts of a certain amount to raise three million. If we look at the top categories, we have received some of those gifts already to get us started. Hence, uh, the eight hundred fifty thousand dollars that we already have committed or donated to the school. But for example, if you were to say, "Okay, I'm not sure I can um, do that much money," but you know what, I could do, I can do seventy bucks a month. I can do 70 bucks a month uh, for three years, then that's, you're gonna do it, you're gonna do a $2,500 donation. Uh, and if we have 80 people do that, we're at $200,000. But you can do 40 bucks a month uh, for 36 months. That's a $1,400 donation. 100 of those people raise $144,000. If you can do $300 a month, um, that's a $10,800 donation. And 10 of those is over $100,000. So we want you to look at this chart and we're gonna, we're, you're gonna get a mail out uh, soon that will have that information in it. And to prayerfully consider where you might see yourself on this giving chart and be involved in that process. And what we're hoping for, uh, we're realistic. We know that not every family is gonna donate $100,000. It's just not gonna happen. We're hoping that every family donates something. Whatever it is, whatever thing you're willing to say in your budget, we're going to go without Starbucks for three years so we can donate to the Christian school. We're going to, you know, I have a family in the last campaign said, we're actually going to do local vacations only for three years. We're not going to do any vacation that costs more than a few hundred bucks. And we're going to tie that money to the school. People have come up with all sorts of, we're not going to upgrade our car. We're going to wait two more years before we upgrade it. And we're going to pull that $200 a month we budget and put it this. People come up with all sorts of creative ways. And that's, that's up to you uh, regarding what you think you can do. And, but we just invite you to prayerfully consider what that might look like and how you could make that work. Um, and hope that you do that, that you pray about it, you talk about it as a family. We actually hope you do that with your kids a bit. Um, I, my deep desire would be that our children would understand that we live in a place of abundance. And that out of that abundance, we are called to be generous people with our hearts, with our energy, with our love, and with our resources. Uh, and that your children would know that you're supporting Christian education beyond just the service you pay for. That you're investing in the school for them, but actually you're investing in the school for their classmates. And you're investing in the school for kids 20 years from now. So that's our deep uh, heart around that. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, and we, yeah, we, we talk about Surrey Christian School and I meet these people who were involved in the founding of it 55 years ago. And, and you know, and they, they, you know, held off on buying a home or they, 
you know, they, they worked 80% of the year so they could actually swing a hammer every evening uh, and Saturdays to build this place. And look at the legacy they talk about. They talk about third and fourth generation children um, being in Christian school. And we'd love to invite you into that story. Uh, I think it's beautiful. So what are the next steps around this? Well, the, the, first, next, the, the, first, well, the first step is for me to thank the people who have already donated. So if you have donated to Surrey Christian School in the campaign, thank you. If you've donated for other annual giving programs, the Imagine campaign, thank you for that. This year, we're rolling that annual uh, Imagine campaign into this Places and Spaces campaign. So you would get a November mail out that says, please don't donate to the Imagine campaign. It's for classroom furniture that's new and innovative, or it's for a new 24 passenger bus, or it's for new playground outside equipment. And you can see evidence of all those things. You can see the new primary playground here. You can see the Gaga Ball kit pit uh, at the Cloverdale campus in a brand new all weather field up there. You can see cool outdoor cement furniture and basketball hoop at the high school campus. So we are grateful for your faithfulness around that. We want to take that annual gift this year and move it towards the campaign. But if you've already given, we want to invite you to consider that being an annual thing uh, and continue to give. Uh, I encourage you to prayerfully consider that. So prayerfully consider your giving ability and what you can do for Surrey Christian School. Watch for a mail that will arrive mid-November with a response card in, included in it. Um, expect a follow-up phone call sometime between now and June. We're going to phone to say, hey, just curious if you saw the presentation. We're going to send this presentation out to everybody, recorded and sent out, as well as the cool 3D video. And we're going to follow up with families to say, yeah, do you want to talk more about that? Do you want to meet in person uh, if you feel safe doing that at the admin house? Do you want to meet via Zoom? Do you want to meet or do you want to join a small group? We'll do some small group presentations as well. Uh, we're going to keep telling this story over and over this year so that you've all got it almost memorized. Um, and then you can, yeah, so watch for those things. Uh, and then encourage others to give. So people at Surrey Christian School, so if you're giving, Tell people that story. You're going to hear in the future, we hope to have people record some stories of people who've donated and why they've donated. And we're not going to tell you maybe how much they've donated, but there'll be a range of donations from $200 to tens of thousands of dollars, et cetera, and why they've chosen to invest in Surrey Christian School. So we encourage you to tell your story to your friends at Surrey Christian School and family at Surrey Christian School. And people not at Surrey Christian School, uh, that might be uh, someone who uh, are a philanthropist. And we have had that at Surrey Christian School. People have no direct connection to Surrey Christian School. Hear the stories of what's happening and have donated to us. Um, and then pray for this campaign and this project. I invite you into that process that you pray for the building project, the permitting process, and you pray for the campaign. Uh, not that we raised tons and tons of money, but actually people would feel um, that they could be faithful around that, whatever that means for them, uh, according to the means they have and what they're called to give. So that's our hope around that. Um, if you've got questions, and there are many ways to give, um, for some of you that's beyond my capacity around GICs or gifts in kind, um, Nicole will either know those answers or she will have access to experts who will have those answers. So we will take care of that. If you, and we've had that in the past where people have different investment portfolio things they want to transfer into Surrey Christian School. We will make sure you're advised if you need that in that. So, um, again, that's not my level of expertise, far beyond my salary grade to understand that stuff. So those are the next steps. Now is the time to build. Uh, and we're hoping um, that you're be, you will be people who will partner in that process with us. I'm excited about this. Uh, I'm excited. I was excited about this before I knew I had a child coming into this program. And now I have a, a preschooler coming. I'm excited for my son, Ily, to have these spaces that I think don't cause flourishing, but they facilitate flourishing for our kids. They help better enable that uh, for our kids. So this is something yeah, that we can do if we do this together. Uh, and it will take all of us together saying, I'm committed and I want to make this happen. And whatever level I can give at and support at and talk positively in the community about it, uh, I can do my part and pray for it and make it happen. Um, that's how it's going to work. Uh, it's not going to be one major donor. It's really going to work if all of our community does uh, whatever we can. So invite you into that uh, and hope you prayerfully consider that. That's the presentation ended. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and bring you all back um, as much as I can. And we're gonna just have some time for questions. If you wanna, if you wanna send a question, 
please send that directly to Nicole Miller and she will uh, sort of collate questions and answer them so we're not being, the screen's not flooded with more and more questions because I'm not good at multitasking. Uh, this was all that I could do to handle this already. So if you have questions, send them uh, directly to Nicole uh, and we'll engage those um, as they come in. Uh, Nicole, have I missed anything in the content that you want me to make sure I should have said? Uh, no, I think you have covered everything beautifully. So Great. thank you for that. Um, I just have one question right now, but if anybody else has any questions, please uh, send them my way. Um, just will the lower parking lot be removed and made into a basketball court as shown in the picture? Ah, uh, great question. Yeah, so architects don't always capture all that stuff totally accurately. It will not be removed. No, it will be parking. Uh, we're not at that place where we can, we would love to have more playground space, but we will still need that. That's in our account for parking. So that will be parking. And that will probably be staff parking. And the idea is hopefully we can, we're hoping that the new parking lot will be reserved for parents 100% uh, or as much as possible. And we can get staff cars um, out of that space. So no, yeah, that's a good catch. Sorry, I missed that. Any other questions? Anything else? Um, will there be more green space for kids? Yes, there will. Uh, the yellow house, I'm in my office right now, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm pointing, which isn't helpful for you. Uh, but there's that yellow house that we own that's beside the blue admin house. All that property will, that will be uh, torn down and leveled. And the parking lot pretty much stops um, just right around the edge of that property line. Uh, and that will be more playground space. So it'll be a nice level field. It'll be an all weather field. The idea is to have a small pea gravel field there with grass around the outside and trees around the outside uh, and up on the top of the berm, some more green space. The idea of having that as an all weather gravel field is, is that it's all weather, uh, but also that when we have big events where we're past COVID, we will actually have an overflow parking as well for parents. Uh, it can be multi-use of it. So the plan, yeah. So we're hoping to spread kids out around those spaces more. Uh, and even the space behind, um, like in between the campuses, uh, the, the southernmost part of the property, there's weird concrete levels and decks there. We're gonna clear all that off. Kids will come out of the intermediate building just downstairs on a, and hopefully a much bigger, just flat blacktop area with some basketball hoops, uh, and some hot scotch and four square stuff there as well. So hope that helps. Perfect. All right, next question. What will happen to the current bus lane space? The city, uh, we were hoping to have it like as a delivery zone, but they're requiring us to plow that up in landscape and landscape. They just feel that's unsafe for vehicles to come in and out of there. So that will be completely gone. It'll be kind of uh, a mixture of sort of plaza and green space. Um, and then, so yeah, just one way in, one way out, and buses come in the same way. So that will be, that will disappear. They, the city does not like uh, how that is for safety, having entrance right beside a crosswalk. And so they want that completely gone. So good question. Um, will the campaign donations be a charitable donation? Yes, all campaign donations are charitable donations. So tax receivable. Um, so that's a great question. So, and that, that applies to other like gifts and kind. There's, um, pretty creative ways under um, CRA that Surrey Christian School can receipt uh, uh, families. So people, for example, you know, our shop teacher can tell you people will donate a car and we just have to do a fair market value assessment and they can get a receipt for that. Uh, and the shop class rips it apart and fixes it up, hopefully, uh, and sells it. Uh, so there's lots of creative ways, but yes, very much full tax receivable. Good question. Um, what is the expected end of construction date? Great question. So we're hoping to get a permit in June. We, we, uh, Nicole really wants to bulldoze the Yellow House in June so we can have all the kids watch it because I think her son, it would make his day, maybe his decade, to watch a bulldoze or smash a house. I don't know what that says about our need for God to be beauty enjoyers and creators. But anyways, so we're hoping to get a permit in June. That's the timeline we're hoping to be on. Uh, we would start construction in the summer, which is great because we have all the big equipment here when kids are gone. That's our hope. Uh, and get all the dump trucks and heavy equipment so that stuff is out of the way when kids come back and smaller equipment, which is just safer. And then we hope to be in the school in September 2022. 
So we're a 12 to 14 month build out. And the, the uh, people we talk to, that our developer consultants are confident around that timeline, especially if we can go hard in the summer with heavy duty equipment without kids there because they just they can go quickly without having to worry about the safety issues around recess and lunch break and you know shutting things down. So yeah, so hopefully we're, that will be our, that's our timeline right now that we're projecting forward. That is all for questions. All right. Any other questions? Last call. Okay, well, we're going to send this out to the community as well. Oh, one more came in? Question, yeah. Uh, what will the effect be on the summer camp program? So right now, um, that's a great question for us. Uh, <laughs> we weren't running summer camps this summer because of COVID. So that's a huge factor for us around, around that. If we're running international camps, we do have Cloverdale and secondary to run them at. We have pretty good capacity. So if we were running camps in the summer, it's unlikely if we get our permit in June that we would run them at the Fleetwood campus. So we would run them at Cloverdale and the secondary campus, which we have, we have good capacity for that. And we've had just started running some summer camps at Cloverdale. So we've had the test run of that and we've run the high school uh, full in the past. So, so we probably wouldn't use the Fleetwood campus um, Unless we use the uh, question someone raises, we, unless we use the intermediate building only and drop off the front. So there's potential in that. We have to look at logistics. But the intermediate building, the, there's just minor details. Like we have to sprinkle that building at some point. So if that happens in quick enough time, yeah, those are the questions. We have to add sprinklers so that it would be shut down during the sprinkling of the building. Not to make it grow, but to make it more fire safe. Okay, a couple more questions have come in. Uh, how many parking spaces in the new parking lot? Oh my goodness, I should have had that answer for you. Would you like to know? Yeah, do you know what? Yeah, it's roughly around 70. 70 new or total? 70 in total. Total, in that new spot. Okay, there we go. Thank yeah, you. And we're not adding, like, we want to make sure people know we're not creating parking for the whole school community. That would actually destroy our playground space. So for 20 minutes at the beginning of the day and 20 minutes at the end of the day, kids wouldn't have playground space during the day. So our big focus was to add more space some more space, but actually really increase the flow and hopefully families get comfortable with, with uh, maybe parking every second day uh, or only parking with littles uh, that don't have older siblings and kind of actually getting used to a safe drop off and feeling that that's comfortable for their kids and not parking on a daily basis. So we keep the flow moving and people are in and out safely. Next question. Go ahead. All right, will there be higher enrollment and more kids at Fleetwood than now? Uh, marginally. So we're not creating, we're not building in order to grow the school. The Fleetwood campus is our largest campus. It is very big for a pre-K to seven. We want kids to know people and be known by people. And the bigger you get, the harder that is. So we are, um, we don't have a staff room. We're kind of, you know, we have a bunch of that kind of stuff going on. We don't have a primary music room. It's in an old staff room with no windows. We just have some space issues. We want to actually have proper facilities, all those programs. Mr. Stewart is teaching PE in the underground parking, which is kind of awesome right now in COVID for the fresh air, but not ideal long-term for a good educational space. We want to have proper spaces for those kids. So we will basically add about one more classroom space uh, for capacity, so not significant growth. So marginal growth, uh, hopefully we're just really efficient. Okay, next question, what will happen to the current learning commons space? Yeah, so the current learning common space, so that was originally, that's been a switch in the plan. The current learning common space is projected, is in quite a nice big space, is to have the little office area removed, uh, have a rubber, a rubber floor put in there, and actually to have people like Mr. Stewart and primary PE teachers do PE stuff in there, uh, and use some new multi-purpose as a bit of overflow, but actually um, to create that space, uh, use that space for that kind of a facility. It's got a nice high ceiling for primary kids. That's a nice big long rectangle and it's kind of sealed off uh, and it's right by the gym, the other gym and the playground equipment. So that's what uh, our primary teachers are wanting to use that for. So we're excited about that. Just, uh, it's a simple, it's a simple minor reno for, reno for us to make that into a neat uh, a play space. It's, it'll also be great for rainy days, just that extra space for kids to be busy doing stuff. So that's the plans for that right now. Good question. All right, that is all for now. Okay. All right, well, I was about to say, we're gonna, that brings us to core date. So thanks for being with us. We're gonna send uh, the PowerPoint and the video uh, 
all that up to parents uh, for more promotional stuff. And you'll hear stories about this and you, keeping the campaign alive and in front of your mind and imagination and hopefully on your heart uh, as you prayerfully consider your role in that. And we'll give you announcements as money comes in and we keep making progress. So I'm excited about that. I hope you're excited. I hope you're hopeful and uh, invite you into, yeah, being part of something that I think is kind of beautiful. All right. Thanks, folks.